Hi, I'm Amy Brand. I'm the Executive Director of Philanthropy Tank. Thank you for joining our workshop today. Our goal is to give you an overview of how to apply to be a change maker in your community. Philanthropy Tank is celebrating its fifth anniversary, and we're really excited to introduce you to an opportunity to make an impact in your community through a creative community service program. We're going to talk to you today about some important dates, some key components to our application, and how you too can apply and hopefully be a finalist. So I'm going to introduce in just a moment Matthew Avila, who's our program coordinator, to take you through some key parts of the application. But I wanted to tell you about some of the programs that have been in the very same place you are today, and we're thinking about their idea and applying. And that's our year four students. Uh, you'll hear about Code for Autism, which is a program that was established through Sophia Lloyd George, who's now a senior at Oxbridge Academy. Her uh, family member has autism, and she wanted to create an outreach program for students that had autism to be able to communicate and express themselves. So she's now teaching coding to various students. The other thing that we're doing is um, a great program through the Mayan girls. The Mayan girls represent Guatemalan community and they were challenged by the various dialects in their community and having a hard time assimilating and getting important information that we would need, like hurricane preparedness, what to do in certain um, cases to get prepared for the start of school. And so their program, they have requested camera equipment and are now translating information to be able to distribute to the community. There's also things that have to do with sports, environment, pets. So it's about what your passion is, but how you can change and make a difference. So we're going to tell you how you can apply and hopefully join us as a finalist and be awarded funding to support your program. With that, I'll pass it to Matthew Avila. Hi, everyone. So I'm uh, going to be going over the application process. I'm going to be kind of giving you a detailed uh, list of what um, each step consists of. Uh, so, of course, the first one being the October 4th deadline, which is coming up pretty soon. Uh, from there, your application goes to our Student Grant Review Committee, who then sends a group of 20 or so finalist uh, applications to our philanthropist investors. So these are individuals in our community who give their own money to fund your projects. They decide who they want to see uh, basically pitch their idea at the live pitch event, uh, which I'll talk a little bit about that later. Uh, from there, you're notified um, at the end of the year uh, if you are a finalist. Um, once you're notified, you go through a series of workshops that are meant to help you prepare for our live pitch event, which will be held on March 19th. Those workshops are from January to March. Uh, we'll show you in a little bit a list of dates that are necessary for you to attend. Um, they are the workshops that will help you to guide you uh, to be prepared for the live pitch event. Um, so without ado, we'll go on and get started here. So to get to our application, you get on, you go to our website. Right here will be a link that says click here to apply. You click on that and it, it should take you to our application portal. From here, we have some information that I, you know, I know it's pretty lengthy, but I strongly recommend that you read through this. Uh, reason being is because we have some important dates down here that I just mentioned for our workshops. You definitely want to review that and put that on your schedule. Um, reason being is that, you know, we don't want you to miss out on any of these workshops um, in case you are chosen as a finalist. So just please make sure you note them down. Um, so once you create a profile, you can log in. So from here, we'll go down here. Uh, here, you'll see that our, there are three components to the application, the actual content, the budget form, and the terms and condition form. So we'll be going over these uh, briefly today, but we'll cover the application and the major points. Uh, here, you'll see mo some more information in regards to the program. Um, Please read through them again. It's very important that you get all these dates on your calendar and make sure that you're aware if you are selected as a finalist. 
uh, you have to attend um, these uh, workshops. They are held on four Saturdays uh, throughout January to March. So we have here, um, you'll see the dates there. Then we have a, fi a final rehearsal with the investors. That'll be the day before the, the, uh, the actual live pitch event. And then we'll have the actual live pitch event, which will be on March 19th on Thursday um, at the Kravis Center. We'll scroll down a little bit here to our judging criteria. Uh, here you'll see there are five things that we uh, judge your application on. The first one being community impact. The second, program feasibility. The third, solution creativity. The fourth, sustainability. And the final one, team strengths. So you'll see throughout the application, each of the questions kind of covers um, some of these areas. Some are weighted a little bit more than others, so just keep that in mind. Um, there are two types of funding tiers that you can apply for. The first one is our annual one-year project. So these are for any projects that have a goal that can be completed within one year. Uh, we have a, some written examples here, but I'll tell you about Boundless Dreams. Boundless Dreams was a 2017 Philanthropy Tank finalist. So Balance Streams was ran by a young lady named Ava Goldstone. She developed a playground called um, Balance Streams. It's in Del Rey. The playground is for children that are disabled and wheelchair bound. So although the the playground was completed within one year, and you know the it's still operational, but it was completed within one year. So this is the type of project that you would apply for um, if um, if you're idea if your concept has does not have a strategic plan to go over that one year. Uh, the other one is a sustainable project. So these are projects that have a strategic plan in place to last beyond one year. Right? So for example, we have a, a team certified out of John I. Leonard who they their program is uh, all about giving CPR classes to middle school students and I believe even some adults. So they uh, actually developed a club at their school that has um, sustained the program. They continue to go to different middle schools all across the county and hold uh, workshops for the students. Um, so, you know, you can come up with various uh, um, ways to sustain your project, whether it be to uh, have your siblings take it over, um, come up with a club at school that can sustain it, uh, or, you know, a church group. The ideas are you know, pretty limitless. Um, but here you just select which one you want to go for. And we'll scroll down a little bit more to cover the um, partner organization. I'll pass it on over to Amy now. Thanks, Matthew. So partner organizations, some of you are there thinking, I don't have a partner yet. And that is fine. When you approach this application, the idea is that you're seeking funding to get your idea off the ground. So none of these things have to be confirmed, but if you are someone who's already volunteering, already working with partners, then it's great to list those. If you are not already doing so, it's great to think about what potential partnerships might look like. So an example of that, if you have an organization that might be working with a health service organization, you might want to pair up with that type of group. For instance, if you're volunteering with an animal rescue, you might seek to partner with Pe Peggy Adams Animal Rescue. If you're working in a community where you may have a connection with a business partner, a private partner that would provide resources, you want to list that as well. And I think a really good example is Alex's Free Kicks. There were a program that applied for funding last year. Alex attends Wellington High, and he wanted to create a program around his love for soccer. So he collects soccer cleats and soccer balls for children who are at the Boys and Girls Clubs around Palm Beach County. These are students who wouldn't normally participate in sports and wouldn't have the means to own their own equipment, sports equipment. So not only has Alex partnered with a nonprofit organization, the Boys and Girls Club of Palm Beach County. He now is looking to partner with a private business and is 
the protein to exporting goods to provide some of the supplies you will need to be able to distribute to the children that participate. So you have both a private and nonprofit partner. And that's something that we will be looking at as far as the feasibility and sustainability of your program. We are happy to link you to other resources. So please, at the end of this video, we'll give you contact information. If you have any questions and like to explore that further, we can provide some assistance. The other key part of this application is a video submission. So we're gonna scroll down to the video. The video can be very short. It's a 90 second video. It can be done on your phone or if you have access to equipment at your school and they have a video production theater department, great, fantastic. It really doesn't increase your chances based on the production, but certainly you can be as creative as you'd like to be. The main thing we're looking at the video is to introduce your team, the grade you're in, and the school you attend. And then we need you to give us a description of your concept. We need to really see and see your vision. So again, it can be something you just talk about and are passionate about and record on your phone. Or if you're already in action with your program, please show us you working with the people that you're going to be serving. That's a great way for us to visualize what your project will be. Um, we are going to supply some links to some examples of video submissions that will be at the end of this presentation. And now I'm going to throw it back to Matthew. He's going to talk to you a little bit about the budget. Great. Thanks, Amy. Um, so we'll just uh, go back to where we were before. Uh, so right here, you'll see the budget form. You'll click on that. Um, so it'll tell you, you'll just click on this link right here, budget form, continue. And it should take you to this Google Docs. Um, well, it's, um, Google Sheets. Uh, right here, you'll I put some instructions to how to download this as a Microsoft Excel file, or you can just uh, uh, you know copy and paste it onto there as well. Uh, but here, kind of want to go over a few things. Uh, you'll not only be listing your uh, your budget line items here. Uh, you we also kind of want you to list you know potentially where it is that you found those items. You know. um, it kind of gives you a little bit more credibility when you can tell us what items you have been looking at and where you've been looking at. It tells us also that you just didn't put a random arbitrary number on the budget. So it, it's good for us to see where you got your numbers from. Um, I would also say that you know, for the investors when they're looking at your budget, it helps them to know, um, to get a sense of what it is that you're trying to accomplish as well, right? Um, also, sometimes, you know, it does help us to find cheaper items out there for you in the future. Um, I think the budget is important, as, uh, as Matthew shared. This is where you can show the vision for your program and what the needs are to really accomplish what you're doing. Um, an example is our STEM lab program that teaches coding, teaches engineering, teaches a bunch of different applications, and they needed Chromebooks to be able to supply, to have the, you know, to be able to show the curriculum. So they priced out their Chromebooks, and based on 10, you know, teaching 10 students, they were able to come out with a figure so that's what we mean about really trying to think through what you're going to need to be able to present the program. Um, we had one group that needed yoga mats, one group that needed um, some camera equipment, as I mentioned earlier. So those are all the things that you need to put into your uh, budget. And again, certainly here to help if we need to guide you through that process. Great. Mm -hmm. So we'll go back here to the terms and condition form just to go through it really quick it's just you know we ask you to make sure that uh, you agree to attending all of these workshops here please make sure like I said before to put it on your calendar um, um, have your your parent sign uh, your legal guardian or parent sign this form uh, and also media release form with some reminders on there as well um, 
So once you're done with that, you just click and submit and save. Please remember to reach out to us. Um, I'll pass it on over to Amy. To... This is a great opportunity. Um, this is a student-driven program. You are in the driver's seat. So if you're selected for this, it's really an opportunity to learn a lot about how to get a program going from the ground up. I think also, too, if any of you are interested in going into business, this has a lot of great uh, management skills that you'll be learning, leadership skills, how to work with others, how to brand your product, how do you brand your program, how to work with social media. There's a lot of things that you learn along the way. So again, if you are selected as a finalist and you are lucky enough to be awarded, you're learning these great skills as well as being as working with an investor. And I think that's important to share as well, that when you are competing in the live event, you're presenting your idea in front of our philanthropist investors. These are all people that have been in the community for many years supporting different organizations that if they accept your proposal are going to be working with you one-on-one -on -one to help you get this project implemented. It's a great opportunity. It's a commitment, but it has certainly its rewards. So we encourage you to apply. If you have any questions, you can contact us at 561-910-3893, or you can email both Matthew and I at info at philanthropytank.org. Thank you for joining us.